Billy Meyer's Prophecies and Predictions 1951 and 1958 A look at what has already come to pass and what will now fulfill with certainty due to humankind's stubbornness, selfishness, and stupidity warning to all the governments of Europe slash prophecies and predictions revised translation by Dyson Divine and Vivian Leg H. January, 2015 Explanation the contents of this brochure had already been written by 1958, constructed from statements from the extraterrestrials Fahoff and Asket, whereby the letters of July 5, 1951, to all responsible ones and August 25, 1958, warning to all the governments of Europe, were sent out. No answer to those was ever received, because all responsible ones and governments cloaked themselves in deep silence. Besides which, they did not heed the warning or take any of the necessary precautions at all in order to avoid the predicted catastrophes, terrible things and destruction, and so on, which, as the time in between has shown as foreshadowed catastrophes have come about without exception. Result the irresponsible ones in government neither listen to the voices of the proclaimers, nor do they endeavor to protect the people from catastrophes, and indeed not even when it has been predicted for them point-blank what the future will bring. As it has been since time immemorial, proclaimers are not heeded, and their warnings of future happenings are simply cast to the wind, and indeed at the cost and to the disadvantage of the people, who as a consequence of the lacking determining measures, suffer damage and destruction to their worldly possessions and whose bodies and lives are even endangered because the irresponsible ones in government who were warned and who have knowledge are imperious and only protect their own lives as well as worldly possessions and quite manifestly think that the entire matter of security and protection of the people is trivial and unnecessary. The prophecies and predictions arose according to my own calculations and a foresight, as well as from statements from the Plerin Svehoff, as well as from Asket who comes from the D.L. universe. These 162 verses were written down on the 24th of August, 1958, and sent to Karl and Anne Veit, from Duis, respectively the German Ophological Study Community in Weisbaden, Germany to publish in their Ufanus. There remains no response from that because Duist, respectively K. and Avit, cloaked themselves in silence and not even once found it necessary to inform their readers about the prophecies and predictions. As the extraterrestrial ask it clarified, both Vates received the prophecies and predictions and read it in its entirety, but thereafter destroyed it because the whole thing did not fit into their sectarian concept. This was because unpleasant facts in regard to the religions and sects were named in the explanations of the prophecies and predictions. Consequently, it was never considered by Karl and any Veet for publication, because both were too deeply inclined towards sectarianism, and the whole thing went against their sectarian belief. Therefore, the act of the destruction of the 162 verses and a concealment of the same from the Vate adherents and the readers of UFO News was the most obvious example of the Vate's irresponsibility. Yet to say is that certain words, respectively, terms, were not that is to say not yet in common parlance with the earth human beings in 1958, but these were named by the Pleurans Fahoff and by the extraterrestrial Asket. Therefore, already at that time they were used by me in my writing. Hinterst mit Trude, September 4, 2005 Billy Edward Albert Meyer Naderflashs, Jolay 5, 1951 Naderflashs 1253 Belach slash ZH To all the responsible ones of the world who are responsible for the welfare of Earth and its entire humanity, along with the individual human beings of all nations, Above all, to the authorities and their senior governments, and to all the responsible ones of the authorities and governments as well as to every single human being I want to speak the following words of warning my fatherly friend Svahoff instructed me by means of prophecies and predictions, in many kinds of things, which will come about on earth in the future and will bring unpleasant things. In the following, I want to expound these things, which can be partly altered however, in part, will come into being as unchangeable. It was only six years ago that World War I, I 
which lasted from 1939 to 1945 and cost the lives of approximately 62 million human beings, found its inglorious end. Even atomic energy was utilized for the murder of hundreds of thousands of human beings and for the destruction of their cities through the irresponsible and felonious action of the United States of America, as the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed by atomic bombs. However, unfortunately, all that will not be the end of all horror, mass murder, wars and acts of terror, if the human beings of all peoples do not finally become sensible enough to remove their might greedy government bosses from office and have them turn tail and run. Basically, it is the people of each country who choose those who govern. Normally, unfortunately, it is the wrong ones who first make great promises to then, when they come into power provoke war and terror and transfix the people with lies and deceit, whereby the people becomes dependent on those at the top and misunderstands the real truth. But that will bring evil consequences in the future because, worldwide if the peoples do not intervene against them the state authorities will embroil human beings increasingly in wars, terror and hate, until the whole thing assumes uncontrollable forms worldwide. The time for this is no longer far away. Because already these monstrous tanks blow in a smoldering fire that will already turn into an open fire in the coming years. Still, there is time to stop the monster that is prophesied for the future of the entire terrestrial humanity and for Earth and its nature. Resting countermeasures can still change everything for the better if the peoples and all the responsible ones of the governments, of the authorities, the scientists and the military, as well as all others who are competent most rigorously endeavor to put an end to all terrible things and bring a positive change to everything. If that does not happen then unimagined horrors are imminent, whereby in every respect the world power, United States of America, will be right out ahead and leading the sword of death as well as the destruction and annihilation. While, towing the line, Israel is involved as are all those countries which nestle in sanctimonious friendship with the United States of America, and indeed, against the will of the rational part of the respective peoples. Not only wars, terror, destruction and annihilation, with thousandful deaths and hundreds of thousands of murdered human beings, will mark the future but also a monstrous overpopulation which will be to blame that all natural laws will get thrown out of kilter. It will be the fault of the human beings that all storms will increase and assume increasingly gigantic forms, such as hailstorms, blizzards and flooding rains as however also the ozone layer will become very dangerously damaged. Monstrous deluges will belong increasingly to the order of the day, because through the overpopulation, the wetland forests and swampy plains will become altered in function to become residential areas, whereby the wild water of the flooding rain will find their way into the houses of the human beings because they can no longer escape into uninhabited wetland areas. Landslides and avalanches, as well as earthquakes and seaquakes as well as every kind of storm, will become rampant the gales and typhoons, hurricanes and tornadoes which will continually increase in their numbers and will become increasingly gigantic and destructive. And also therewith, overpopulation will bear the blame, because overpopulation will give rise to monstrous negatives and thereby give rise to an unnatural climate change that in only one decade from today will already begin to affect the world very detrimentally. The monstrous mass and weight of the cities and villages continually, increasingly, dress the inner structures of the earth whereby the tectonic plates will be adversely affected, inevitably leading to increasing tectonic displacements and faults, through which immense tremors will be evoked worldwide, whereby finally the deaths will go into the hundreds of thousands and into the millions. And these tremors also have influences on the earth's entire volcanic activity. Consequently, also the volcanoes which, in many cases, are connected to each other worldwide, become ever more frequently and more destructively active. That will also demand many human lives, indeed, especially in those areas where, irrationally, habitations are built too close to volcanoes, as is also the case on the beaches of oceans, of great rivers and of seas, where human beings have built on the immediate shorelines, which, through storm waves and tsunamis, will be flooded in violent measure and will demand very many human live. Yet that is not all, 
because through the continually growing overpopulation, which already in 50 years will have increased to over 6 billion, uh, has been predicted, many monstrous and insoluble problems arise. Famines will increase, while old diseases, believed to have been eradicated, will return. Through mass tourism from the industrialized countries, these countries will become inundated with economic refugees from the entire world, as a monstrous problem with asylum seekers will become insoluble. And it is predicted that, at the end of the 80s, the boom will collapse. And, worldwide, monstrous and unprecedented unemployment will break out, whereby criminality at the hands of the unemployed will climb as it will through criminal gangs from the so-called third world countries, will spread out into the industrialized countries and will not even shy away from murder in the pursuit of their misdeeds. Also national debts will climb into immeasurability, as well as terrorist extremism and neonazism, and so forth. Prostitution, as predicted by Zweihoff, will take on unbelievable forms and will be carried out to the public worldwide, such that even children will not be spared from it. In the next decades, prostitution will become a respectable occupation that will be acknowledged officially by the authorities and will also be designated as taxable. Television, already invented, will belong in the everyday life of every family, as will the technology of the computer which is already being worked on diligently in America, Germany, Japan and the Soviet Union. The television and the computer will become the most important information media, but also, they will become the significant forms for the public advertising of prostitution. Human beings, in the course of the next 50 years, will become cold in their thoughts and feelings, through which interpersonal relationships will produce ever stranger effects and will only be purposive. True love will become a rarity, and many marriages will only take place in order to indulge in a certain status associated with prestige and money. The result will be that many marriages will no longer hold together, family will be destroyed, and the progeny, as well as becoming sexually abused, will also become social and neglected. Already at the end of the 50s, human beings, particularly the young, will begin to lead a life that is often only directed at drugs, and then, later, when the time of the 80s approaches, the drug problem will become rampant also, only enjoyments will still be of importance, and destructive and disharmonious sounds will shape the world of music, whereby the psyche will be impaired and the entire behavior of those human beings who align themselves with this destructive type of music will fall to the negative. In the realm of sectarianism, those allegedly chosen by God will increasingly appear and will financially exploit their believers, make them dependent and even drive them to suicide. Responsible ones will use the time to become rich through their faithful supporters, especially when they spread anxiety and horror concerning the change of the millennium, because they will claim that the world will end in the year 2000. Then there will not even be a shine away from spreading the lies that extraterrestrials will rescue the select however, naturally, only if the select ones deliver large sums of money to the sect leaders. Much more will be brought about by the growing overpopulation, which is fundamentally the actual source of all terrible tanks of the future, because the greater the overpopulation becomes, the greater the problems will become which rise from it. So, new rampantly spreading diseases will appear which will demand millions of human lives, and indeed this will already occur in the coming 80s, and indeed they will be transferred from animals to human beings. And this will also be the case in the far distant future times, where the rampantly spreading diseases will also be brought to Earth from outer space. However, all that concerning rampantly spreading diseases originating from animals and spreading to human beings will be disputed by the responsible ones and they will slander as liars those who are informed about the real truth. If the world and its humanity are thus ruined, then it is the earth human being himself or herself who is the originator, whereby he or she creates the real cause of it by propelling his or her overpopulation into ever-increasing numbers. Therefore it will not be an imaginary god of some religion or sect who determines the impending monstrous problems and excesses, but solely the human being of earth who, in his or her delusion, believes himself or herself to be the highest and greatest creature in the universe far higher than this can ever be for the creation. Through the guilt of the human being, through his or her overpopulation, through his or her megalomania, through his or her irrationality and high-handedness, 
he or she challenges all the powers of nature, which, together with the earth, revolt and defend themselves against the uncertain machinations of the earth human being. Thus, the natural forces on earth, together with earth itself, overflow. Because the human being disturbs and destroys the entire natural course of the elements and life. I have all that to say, because it is the prophetic and, at the same time, the predicting truth. All of you who have heard these words of mine, pluck up the courage to consider that which is said and draw from it the right conclusions, and to act correctly, because there is still time however it already has begun to slip between the fingers. Consider this prophecy and prediction and behave in the sense of a change for the better. Also make everything public for all the human beings of earth through instructions in all media, in order to achieve a change and transformation in the positive sense and in order to protect earth and its entire humanity from all hardship, from all terrible tanks, from all uncertainty, from many deaths and destruction and from the step into annihilation. All of you who receive my letter have the opportunity, the might and the responsibility to protect earth and its humanity from all I have revealed to you. Do not hesitate, rather act, and indeed quickly, because time is pressing. If you do not act immediately, then you are just as responsible, if the prophecy is fulfilled as are all those who in the future will cause its fulfillment. Edward Albert Meyer Odecon Zurich, the 25th of August, 1958 Edward Meyer, Whitakon Castle Witticon Zurich to all the governments of Europe warning to all the governments of Europe. An absolutely reliable source provides predictions for the future of Europe and the entire world and these have nothing to do with prophecies because they are a prescient look into the real future, from which comes the following. In a few years in Europe and the world the climatic conditions will change latently, through the fault of human beings such that all kinds of extremely bad weather will come into being in such a form that, from it, monstrous material damage will result to land, houses and other buildings, to streets, mountains, railway lines, wild streams, grassland streams, rivers and lakes. There will be many human lives to mourn as a result of the upheaval and storm caused by the climate because already in the next few decades a rapid and increasing climatic warming and climatic change will occur which will create enormous snowfalls, hailstorms, monstrous masses of rain, gales, typhoons, tornadoes, hurricanes and other storms as well as droughts, thunderstorms and forest fires in unimagined dimensions, and they will tear across Europe and the entire world evoking gigantic damage. Wild streams and grassland streams will become ripping rivers, rivers will become raging currents, whereby wild waters will spill over every bank and evoke immense inundations which devastate the land and destroy many human beings' achievements and existence because they will be built too close to the banks and in wetlands, and so on. Already soon, immense volcanic eruptions will also happen along with monstrously extreme earthquakes and sea quakes which will extend far into the third millennium, become ever worse, and will demand innumerable human lives. Initially, everything will still happen to a small extent, but in the course of the next decades it will increase, and, towards the end of the 20th century, everything will already abnormally get out of control. But that does not mean the end of events, because when the new millennium has just arrived nature will rebel even more, and more enormously against the environment destroying insanity of human beings and will reach such a dimension as would be reminiscent of the primeval times of the earth. If the coming events are considered and analyzed then it follows, clearly and distinctly, that the human being himself or herself bears most of the blame for the coming terribleness and chaos as well as for the catastrophe, even when those with pathologically low intelligence, as well as irresponsible know-it-alls and scientists, will assert the opposite. Fundamentally, the overpopulation is the factor behind all the terrible things which are to be found in climatic warming and environmental destruction.
Also, open prostitution and criminality as well as an asylum seeker problem and neo-Nazi movement will spread and create great problems. Harsh, effective measures against those and against all other terrible things must be taken, as they must be against the world domination craving machinations of the United States of America, which triggers wars all over the world leads wars itself and throws other countries into chaos and want to break and exterminate their mentality, religion and politics. And because of the frantically fast-growing number of human beings, they, the human beings, are forced, ever more frequently and increasingly, to exploit and destroy the environment and the earth in order to comply with the increasing needs of all kinds. These needs increasingly climb with humanity's growing number, whereby nature and the entire environment become increasingly affected and destroyed which self-evidently also has a devastating destructive effect on the climate. The planet itself is tormented as atomic and other explosions disturb the structure of the earth and trigger earthquake. Bodies of water, nature, the atmosphere and near space are being polluted. The primal forests greedily destroyed and annihilated for profit and the Earth's resources irresponsibly exploited. The order of the day and the future is the insanity of overpopulation and the resultant climate change and the destruction, the annihilations, the chaos and the catastrophes must be stopped, and natural water courses and wetlands must be restored, because only then can the worst still be avoided. And furthermore, the world population must be reduced through a worldwide, controlled cessation of births, because only through this can the increasing needs, and the thereby connected destruction, be finally repaired. Already very much has been done which fulfills the predictions, for which reason it is also necessary that steps be taken against that the pollution of the environment through every kind of fossil fuel engines as well as through smokestacks and so forth, must most urgently be stemmed, along with all other forms of environmental and air pollution. Also, it is of most urgent necessity that all human buildings of every kind, such as domestic residences and factories, and so on, are removed from areas endangered by avalanche or flood. Wetland areas, and so forth must be given back to nature as natural water catchment areas for flood waters. Domestic buildings and factories, and so forth, must no longer be built on wild streams, grassland streams, on lake shores or in, or on, avalanche slopes or plains threatened by water. Additionally, extremely urgently, provisions must be made on streams, rivers, lakes, roads, residential areas, overhangs and mountains, and so forth, whereby, in endangered positions, where wild waters overflow, or mud flows, snow and mud slides as well as landslides occur, and can cause damage, proportionally very strong and high defensive obstacles are built in order to protect houses, streets, thoroughfares and rail lines from washout, floods, tremors, and from landslip. That will be needed in many places, because much of the predicted chaos and catastrophe is unfortunately already unavoidable and the time rushes past and is becoming scarce. Thus action is called for, and this is your responsibility because you sit in government and now know that which the future will bring in Europe and the entire world. Act before it is too late and also pass this warning and prediction along to your successors as they have a duty, just as you do, to act in the context of the required need in order to protect and preserve the land and everything existing thereon as well as life and limb as well as the worldly possessions of human beings. Edward and my Prophecies and Predictions Edward I of Switzerland my eyes and mind see things of the future which will take place from today, the year 1958, and therefore will be. Therefore I see and comprehend things through the passage of time, up to the most distant future, that still remain hidden from the earth people. 
Many years will pass before my prophecies and predictions have been fulfilled and a new and better time begin. Until then however it is still far, very far, and much misery and need as well as evil, wars, terror, chaos and catastrophes will have broken over humanity and the world. Until now, gigantic crowds of religious believers wandered over the earth, and also, in the future, uncountable numbers of believers of unbelievably many lunatic sects will trample the surface of the earth, whereby some sect gurus will drive their believers to mass suicide and murder. They will spread over everything like poisonous mushrooms and their delusion will peal like a trumpet call over the entire world. Sectarianism will bear bad fruit and will cost many lives through murder and suicide as also through politics and power lust in diverse countries. Hundreds of thousands of people will be murdered as in the Soviet Union which will be dissolved no later than 1991, and in East Germany which will, however, only exist until the late 80s of this century thereafter Germany will be reunified, whereby, in contrast, in Iraq a war will be led through the United States of America, through their country's president, however this will be without success, for which reason one of his sons, who will likewise be the U.S. as head of power, will, in the third millennium, unleash a second war in Iraq which will ultimately lead to an unbelievable disaster and to torturing as well as to mass murder through United States armed forces and the rebellious. A human, I see the great expanses of the earth, the almost boundless oceans, the great continents, mighty mountains, the vast forests, bubbling springs, the flowing brooks, rivers and all the lakes, and I see how they will all, at the hand of man, be harmed and made sick, destroyed, and the majority will be annihilated. Centuries or millennia will not have passed before all that happens, and all that which is yet to say in words of prophecy and prediction happens, because the beginning of all the evil had already begun with the development of modern technology and with the terrors of both world wars. In the future fur evil wars will be spread over the world, which will become so numerous that the normal person will lose track. Through war and rebellion, people will be exterminated and countries will collapse in on themselves and a new name will be given by every power to the man which is stolen under his command, whereby the traditional name ceased to exist. Many peoples, workers, beggars, service people, extremists, anarchists, and neo-Nazis will, as opponents against the people hostile and corrupt authorities, provoke misery, need, murder and manslaughter as well as terror, rebellion and revolution as well as violent demonstrations and much destruction of much personal property and people's acquisitions. Terrorists will spread murder and destruction worldwide, thereafter they return again to their slippery cracks and hide in order to hatch new monstrosities and bring death and corruption over humanity. The terrorists, warmongers, wrongdoers, prostitutes, and criminals will organize themselves worldwide and delude themselves that they are kings and emperors of the world, while the people and the organizations established for maintaining order watch powerlessly and have to creep away in order to protect their live. Even next year on September 13, 1959, using rocket propulsion, the human, respectively the Soviet Union, will make a hard landing of an unmanned object on the moon. And on April 12, 1961 an Earth human will climb high in the sky with a rocket to orbit round in the Earth's outer space, then on February 3, 1966 an aerospace object will make a soft landing on the moon, then in 1968, the outer fringes of Earth's space will be left, and later the first trip to the moon will be undertaken whereby up until the year 1972, five, five man moon landings will take place through the U.S.A., while a sixth moon landing supposedly the first on August 20, 1969 will rest only on a worldwide stage deceit as a result of the political armament race with the Soviet Union. The time has just begun when the human conquers the depths of the oceans and slowly the power of the sun, in order to win diverse energies from them. And the human is on the paths, in the next decades up to the new millennium, to unlocking the secret of life, in that he will unravel the gene. 
Likewise in the 80s of this 20th century it will happen that that the human can be bred through artificial fertilization. While already at the turn of the third millennium humans and animals will be able to be cloned out of single cells without any actual act of procreation. At the close of the second millennium humans will already busy themselves with the first far-reaching steps in the genetic manipulation of flora and fauna. Then, in the third millennium, genetic manipulation will begin on the human. The end of the second millennium will on one hand, be marked by very rapidly establishing computer technology, and on the other hand, rebellion and a great war which would be called the First Gulf War, and a Second Gulf War would follow, coinciding with the start of the third millennium released by the U.S.A. who has already deluded itself since the First World War that it is the world police and also wants to bring world control under its sword. Towards the end of the second and beginning of the third millennium the human will take himself for creation and cause harm and bring destruction to the entire earth, effective in the whole of nature. And the time is already coming when the peoples will begin to mix, and when many people will flee from their homeland countries to find a hideout somewhere else in foreign countries, and there will be many refugees who have to fight to maintain their lives while very many others creep into the structure of the better positioned countries as economic refugees. Prostitution is already on the way worldwide to becoming a public and officially sanctioned enterprise which cannot be curbed and which will be accountable to the state for taxes, as in this regard, ethics will no longer have a role to play, in the same way that neither will propriety and health. Because of unrestricted prostitution, in about 25 years an already embryonic deadly epidemic will develop worldwide that will be named IDS and will finally cost several hundred million human live. Also child prostitution is catching on increasingly in monstrous measure, as is the sexual murder of women and children. Trade in humans with children and women regarding prostitution and for the purpose of human organ trade has now already become mundane, yet this evil will still increase until the turn of the millennium and into the third millennium, as organ transplantation from human to human will soon, already in a few years, become an everyday occurrence for the earth people. Already, in a few years, marriage between man and woman would only be formed for appearances without a binding love, rather they would be only joined together out of the personal interests of the individual partners, with the result that the marriage union is just lies and deception and would no longer be constant, consequently marriages end ever more in divorce. Also the whole of nature will rise up and indeed against the human and his irresponsible machinations with which he disturbs the course of the natural things as well as of the flora and fauna and of all life. Storms ranging from heavy to the heaviest will, from now on, until far into the third millennium, bring unspeakably much misery, need and suffering to the human as has never happened since time immemorial. The most severe earth and sea quakes will take effect with primeval like force and demand millions of human lives as also will deluge like masses of rain that evoke monstrous flooding and cause mighty destruction as the human has never before collectively experienced or seen. And what results in the last 42 years of the second millennium, along with very many other evils, along with chaos, ghastliness and catastrophes that are not mentioned, carries everything on also into the third millennium and exacts its tribute all round. And when the second millennium comes to an end, then the human stands in the darkness of his existence in that he wanders round in an impenetrable labyrinth out of which he can no longer find his way, because it will be deep night in his consciousness, whereby however, the threatening red glowing and the fiery traps of religions and sects lie in wait. And the religions and sects shake in rage because the believers who finally want to utilize the truth run away from them, yet the fiery traps of the religious power plays of the religions and sects grasp after the young people in order to burn them in the flames of religious fanaticism and make them incapable of escape. So young people want to protect themselves from the lies and false teaching of the religions and sects as their ghastly rage with which they gather believers around themselves with lies and deceit will know no bound.
Already now, and first properly in the third millennium, the human know deep within himself that he must not utilize religions and sects, rather the effective truth, the creational truth, as well as the creational law and directives, yet although he hears the voice of truth in himself, he does not want to hear it, because he will be tormented by religious angst and cannot free himself from his religious or sectarian belief because he expects divine punishment for that, were he to do that. And if the human seeks the effective truth he will be misled and deceived, because in the third millennium, even more than in the second, there will be innumerable sectarians who ply a lucrative trade with their delusional false teachings and make horrendous profits from them. Also the simple human himself, as well as the rich, will still only see his mammon, count it, and strive for wealth, luxury, amusements and holiday, whereas the administration and the authorities will exploit the commoner with all kinds of new excises and taxes. In the third millennium, the Moloch Mammon will bring forth much worse bloom than in the twentieth century, because the immoral and the wrongdoer, as well as white color criminality and warmongery and so on, would no longer recognize boundaries when it comes to hoarding Mammon. Criminal leaders of commerce will be amicable towards million-dollar payments and million-dollar golden handshakes and engage in maladministration and thereby drive even quite traditional companies to ruin, as also the commoners and private bankruptcies will walk away when they can no longer control their finances because they are driven away from reliable money and are equipped with plastic money in the form of plastic cards with which they subsist in the circumstances of their indebtedness with sundries paid for on credit, and get into horrendous debt, whereby also special companies come into existence for the administration of plastic cards, while the banks will be in on that, with plastic cards they will name credit cards in order to make their customers dependent, whereby they quite particularly have their eye set on the youth who thereby pile up immense mountains of debt which drive them into need and misery. The fire of maladministration spreads itself constantly, also in the inept governments which, likewise driven by maladministration, manage their own countries into ruin when they accrue such immense debts that they rise in such a fashion that the country must be declared bankrupt. And it will be that even before the time of the third millennium, and indeed in 1993, a political and commercial European dictator will rise that will be called the European Union and in evil, will carry the number 666, as through this the citizens of all member countries will finally be brought under total control through biometric data in identification devices and in the form of small data chips in the head or body inserted in a biometric identification system that would be overseen and controlled through a central data bank whereby finally the whereabouts of every human can be exactly determined to the meter. First the United States of America and later the European Union will introduce this modern human enslavement thereafter, then other countries will also follow, or preceding the Swiss, whereby, through this process, the personal and national citizens' human rights will be drastically trimmed, which fundamentally will be originally already planned at the construction of the European Union whereby the citizen is finally deemed fully incapable of managing his own affairs, and should be governed only by the authorities, without having a right to a say regarding certain government things and decisions. The morals of very many people will completely sink, whereby many villages and every city will be a Sodom and Gomorrah as the prostitution of adults and children takes on completely boundless form. Many young people will, in every form and manner, deteriorate to extremism in everyday life as well as in their professional life, whereby drug, medication, alcohol and narcotic addiction take their upper hand. Many young people will flock to extreme radical skinhead and neo-Nazi front and wave their flags, and form corresponding organizations that cause much damage and harm, indiscriminately attack innocent people on the street and not seldom beat them until they are crippled. In the coming time many blood banks will be contaminated by viruses and will make the people sick and will deliver death if the blood is transfunded transfundia correct equals transfused transfusionia. 
According to data from the Pliarens linguists for the German and Latin languages, towards the end of the 20th century new planets will continuously be discovered at distant solar systems that however can bear no human life. New solar satellites will also be discovered in our solar system that move far outside the orbit of Pluto, yet that will first be after the turn of the millennium. Already in 20 years the time will come that newly serious plagues, deadly for the human, come about, especially in Africa as also however in other countries, and in part there would be no cure for them. Furthermore great famines will rage in the third world, whereas in the wealthy, industrialized countries gigantic warehouses are stored with cans and miscellaneous groceries, while farmers senselessly destroy fruit and vegetable, and so on because they don't want to sell their wares at opportune prices, because their greed for money and wealth will know no bounds, which is why they also will break up their land and their worldly possessions for jingling coins, to live from that instead of having to go to an honest job anymore. The human will be ever more unscrupulously addicted to greed for money and wealth, whereby he would secretly commit the murder of his parents, which would never be solved, in order to inherit from them. It comes about ever more frequently that mothers murder their children at birth or abandon them, while step-parents beat their children to death as well as leave them to die of thirst and starve. In the future many families will be destroyed through this because fathers or mothers live in endless strife which often also leads to the fathers or mothers murdering all the family members. In 30 years the business prosperity which will be restrained until then will collapse and induce immeasurably high joblessness in all industrial countries whereby not only many millions of people will be without work and be benefiting from handouts, rather also families will be destroyed, criminality will spread out and murders will be committed. An unimagined impending asylum seeker problem will break over the industrialized countries before the turn of the millennium and evoke asylum seeker tourism, through which a great many social elements emigrate who release a crime wave, whereby the worldly possessions of many people will no longer be safe, nor will life and limb. Through the madness of his overpopulation, the human has already detrimentally altered the world and the climate in such a way that a climbing climatic warming becomes apparent that will be carried far into the third millennium and release monstrous natural catastrophes, yet that will not be the end, because everything goes further in the same style and at the beginning of the third millennium more than seven billion people will be on the earth which will lead to even greater harm and to destruction worldwide because on one hand nature strikes back in vengeance and on the other hand the human undertakes everything which will destroy the entire environment and life. The constantly climbing mass of overpopulation leads to apathy and the softening of the people whereby the genuine interpersonal relationships grow cold and disappear while the masculine gender, however, still slowly, unstoppably becomes less potent. Through atomic contamination of the environment through atomic explosion, atomic power plants and radioactive waste from industry and hospitals, and so on the entire life of fauna and flora as well as of humans will be ever more injured and disturbed in health, while also mutations of fauna and flora as well as of humans will appear in terrible way. Neither air, bodies of water, land, mountains nor seas will be safe from the human in the future because, as he creates room everywhere for the growing overpopulation and for sporting purposes, he irrevocably destroys everything through ski lifts, mass settlement, mountain climbing, racing with motor vehicles and motorboats as well as monstrous domestic buildings which tower high into the sky, as well as with street and tunnel construction, and so on. The human will populate the earth, the air and the seas more and more and take all the living space which is for the native wildlife, and thereby exterminate countless species and varieties. The human elevates himself ever more to commander over the earth and already in the coming twenty years he will make an effort to strive for the power of creation whereby he will know no further barriers. Yet everything will turn against him because he will stray like a drunk, blind ruler through the world, irritated and tormented in delusion and at the end of his path he will fall into a deep abyss.
In the coming time entire cities will sprout out of the ground and the countryside will empty itself ever more of people. The order of the people turns ever more towards instability and many would make their own laws and lie by them. The time will come in the third millennium when there will no longer be enough nourishment for all the people which will lead to ghastly scenes of starvation and murder and manslaughter. Criminals and wrongdoers already spread themselves through the cities and organized gangs will ambush, beat up, or even kill, simply for fun, or to rob, because peaceful games and a normal life will no longer be sufficient for them. Not only will many people suffer hunger, but they will also be set out in the cold, turn blue and freeze, and it would be, thereby, that many rather seek death than live an unworthy life in the bitterest poverty and begging in order to keep body and soul together. In the future many people will catapult themselves out of life because they are addicted to drugs, have become sick or old, and feel lonely, helpless, and abandoned, because feelings of neighborliness deteriorate ever more to pure expediency and addiction to profit. For a horrendous price, those stricken by age will be stuck in old people's homes, and financially completely shamelessly exploited to the last drop of blood. Suicides will be ever more numerous, as will also euthanasia, because criminals addicted to business will draw monetary use out of it, whereby it will come to death tourism in countries in which help render the dying, in murder and suicide, will be allowed. The death helper will be a dealer without illusions, and he will sell his suicide poison to everybody who wants to have it. The drug problem will gain more and more ground, whereby internationally organized criminal gangs will maneuver even children into the vicious cycle of drug addiction. The bodies of the people will be destroyed by drugs and addiction and toward the beginning of the third millennium a dangerous new drug with the name crystal will cause a furor amongst addicted people whose faces and bodies will be furrowed and ruined within a few months, and aged in such a way as if the addicted were monsters a hundred years old. Through selfishness, hate, revenge, lovelessness, virtuelessness, and addiction to pleasures, and so forth. The human's thoughts and feelings cool more and more, whereby the psyche and the consciousness and the morality are corrupted. All those who are addicted to drugs of any kind that they drink, inhale, or inject into their blood will become like wild animals and lose control of themselves and many of them will rob, steal, break in and murder, rape and extort in order to get the poisons to which they are addicted their lives will be a torment and become a real catastrophe. The already near future would bring a situation where every human will try to attain as much pleasure, worldly possessions, delight, money and wealth as he possibly can and it will be that even the parents deceive their children, the children their parents, and the siblings will deceive each other if they can thereby gain a profit for themselves. Marriages will no longer be formed out of love, rather out of addiction to profit for the sake of appearances and as a consequence of erroneous and short-term confusions of the feelings, and so it happens ever more frequently that husband and wife will be unfaithful, and divorce as often as they marry. As it once was in Sodom and Gomorrah, in the future many women and men will go through the streets and into pleasure houses in order to take everybody and anybody as sexual partners just as everybody or anybody pleases. Many married women and men would ever more frequently utilize other partners from outside the marriage, thus many men would sire children about whom they know nothing and women would bear children without knowing the names of the fathers. And therefore it will be that every tenth birth is not of the legal father, which is foisted onto the husband, and it will be that children bear children and that mothers will not name the names of the fathers. Many children will have no father or mother because they divorced or disappeared and recognized, because they do not want to be a father or mother or lie in a marriage, because the order and tradition of a good and functional family will be lost, as also the laws of marriage will have no more value, as if the human had become wild again. And as already happens, it will also be that in the future and more and more, fathers will sexually abuse their daughters, 
young and old pedophiles sexually offend against children, women of every age are raped, shamed and murdered not seldom in all openness and all over the world as a result of common and ever-increasing sex tourism. Men will rape men, and women, women, and children go to the highest bidder through their own parents, relatives, or through child abductors, rented or sold to the highest bidder. Fathers sire children with their own daughters, children and mothers with their own sons' descendants, whereby a mixing of the blood comes about in the same family and thereby the evil spreads itself from bed to bed, which invokes psychic and consciousness-related damage and a state where the humans do not truly know people in true love, rather only acknowledge people by their sexual practices through their way of life and through their thoughts and feelings and through their lack of virtues and all good values, the people will have a grief, tormented and haggard faces, because their entire falsely lived lives will be mirrored in them. The time is coming when nobody who speaks for law and order will be heard anymore, as it has already been for a long period of time that none are heard who speak against the religious and sectarian beliefs and painstakingly spread the truthful truth in regard to life, creation and its laws and directive, which especially will be again approaching this time, when, in the third millennium, a German religious fanatic pope will assume the pontificate, who believes through his fanatical belief in God that he can save the world from its disintegration and downfall. And the world, the devastating machinations of the religions and sects will spread out again, and innumerable false messiahs and false prophets will infatuate the unstable and blend to the truth masses of humanity, and newly led them into madness, and many of these believers will carry weapons and build bombs, and in their fanaticism thereby spread murder by many thousandfold as well as great destruction. The murdering and destroying fanatics of religions and sects will, in their death-bringing fiery beliefs speak of justice in the name of God, and thereby spread misery, need, death and corruption. And it will be that fanatical Islamists carry out bloody revenge on the distant descendants of the Christians, for the earlier crusades when they accomplished their deadly and destructive acts through irrepressible terror all over the world. Threatening thunder will crack over the earth and deaths in their thousand will rage when the criminal national powers of the U.S. release war into the wide world and when Israel's national forces spread just the same terror, murder, death and corruption as the Palestinians themselves from whom uncountable suicide bombers will go. All over the world all variety of military and rebellious forms of murder will recruit out of all levels of the population and drill the recruit into being murder machines devoid of feelings and conscience, to whom also every kind of torture is a shining joy. Organized murder and terror commanders will live secretly in cities worldwide and plan and carry out deadly attacks in order to kill thousands of people and produce unimagined destruction. There will be no more order and no effective rule to protect the lives of the people, because, through the fault of the warmongering national powerful ones, the rebellious, religious, sectarian and fanatic terrorism will flare up like a bright flash in the night in order to sow death and corruption. Through inhumane terror attacks, torture and through war, very many people will degenerate and fall back into barbarism, whereby everybody will scream for the torture and death of their neighbor when they are of a different you or act counter to the law. Thus hate and revenge will spread out and even the order-bringing organizations will be evilly attacked and their efforts to create order will be hindered, whereby human atrocities among the people can gain ground, and nobody more is going to hurry to help the other if she or he gets into need. Already soon, humans will no longer align themselves with justice but only with their belief and blood while the judge thereafter only exploits his office so that the little man is hanged and the great scoundrel is let free, as true justice will no longer be asked for, rather everything will be judged only in terms of money, belief and appearances. Children will, in the course of the next decades, be ever more surrendered to neglect because the parents hunt more and more for money and pleasure whereby the children are abused in regard to love and upbringing and are left alone, 
as they are thrown out of the house and family life like young creatures and neglected because nobody will bother any more about them and hold a protecting hand over them, whereby they slide into scenes of the social narcotics, drugs, theft, robbery, criminality and prostitution. Worldwide, hate will gain ground more and more and the greed for power of the nation's powerful ones will recognize no more boundaries, resulting in bad laws being passed to torment the citizen and from which nobody can remain spared, not the elderly, not the youth, nor the children. Houses will be destroyed and plundered by criminal gangs, or the houses will be broken into in order to ambush the residents, rob them and even to kill them. The people will become ever more indifferent to their neighbors, so they will also close their eyes when others are abused on public streets, women raped or children abducted. Children will become merchandise and sex objects, their weakness will be forgotten, and they will be trained like animals, to be thrown away after use or slaughtered and murdered, because humans no longer know love, rather still only ghastliness. Ever since a long time ago every person has known through public media, such as radio and newspapers, what is happening at all ends of the earth, yet that will only be the start, as the means of communications and news spreading will spread rapidly, as through television, through which event can be directly followed pictorially in all corners of the world, as also, however, through various electronic telecommunications devices that, over satellites, transmit everything up to the Earth's hindmost nook, in word and picture, while in only 40 years even the simplest citizen will carry a pocket telephone around with him and would use it at every possible and impossible opportunity. Because of the constantly rising standard of living of the people in the industrialized countries, they close their eyes to misery in the third world. Indeed they see the starving children on television whose eyes and mouth, as well as wounds, are covered with innumerable flies, and those who are hunted like rabbits as target practice for the murderous military, or those who will be killed to get to their organs which will be sold dearly for transplantation. Many people, as regards their neighbor, will not only be indifferent, rather also merciless, subsequently they turn their eyes away so they do not have to see the misery and the need of the neighbor and they will not worry that children or adults die of hunger because they will give them nothing, or only very inadequate alms that would suffice for neither life nor death. A better positioned person of the prosperous country sleeps on bags full of gold, and what he gives with one hand he takes away again with the other whereby the needy neither live nor die, rather than can only vegetate in misery. The human plies trade with everything that comes into his fingers and, as a result, everything has its price, even the water that is our common planetary possession, and everything will be sold and nothing more given, consequently every gift demands a gift in return. As children will be hunted and killed for the price of their organs, grown people, for money, offer themselves for their organs for transplantation, or they bequeath them as a legacy so for them nothing more is sacred, not their body, nor their blood, their organs, their consciousness or psyche. And if they could sell their spirit form and make a profit from it, they would do that too, and people will be murdered for their organs, treacherously, just as by execution, while irresponsible doctors, in greed for profit, will intentionally cut up the bodies of the dead for the sale of their organs. Already the human has changed the face of the earth so badly that it can no longer be returned to its original form, and that will not be the end, as much worse changes will happen in the future when the forests are further cleared and the fields and mountains have been transformed into human residential settlements, concreted over and asphalted because the human continues to be deluded that he is ruler of earth and life, although he can never aim power over the planets as his own, because they set their nature to defend, and will show the human in his limit. Also, when nature defends itself against the human madness of planetary destruction, the earth becomes ever more naked and less fruitful, and through the fault of humans the air will burn, because the ozone shield will slowly be destroyed. Through the people, the water of the earth will increasingly turn into ill-smelling fluffs, and all life will slowly wither there while the earth's riches will be completely exhausted 
whereby all goods will become scarce, and thereby the hate that the humans have for one another will climb because everybody wants to have that which the neighbor still has. The consciousness as well as reason and understanding of humans will become his prisoners and he will be drunk from religious and sectarian beliefs, thereby he will not notice that he, through religions and sects, will be ever more deceived and kept distant from the effective truth of creation and its laws and directives and as a result, he chases after unreal religious and sectarian images and reflections which hold him back from the truth and make him a willing sheep of the wicked ones. The religions and sects fall upon their believers like evil carnivorous animals, drive them together and hurl them into the deepest abyss of misguidance and ignorance, and, to drive it all sufficiently, they set one up against the other in order to be able to rip everyone in their claws and deprive them of the life of truth. As it has been until now, the religions and sects will, for a long time yet, rule through their representatives and gurus in order to rule and command the human who is innocent and inactive in so far as knowledge is concerned. Yet by and by in the more distant future they will slowly lose their cult places in which they preach nonsense and mislead and enslave the people, yet their time is coming that they will hide their faces and must keep their names secret, in order not to become the victims of the rage of the people as a result of their misleading them. Yet it is so, however, that every believer, in truth, is a serf of religion and sects, even though each one erroneously believes that he is a free person, yet that will change because the time will come when nobody, or still almost nobody, takes part in the gatherings of the gurus, the master, exalted ones, enlightened ones, the pfafenkapchen literally pastors, little caps, popes and priests, and so on because many of the people will raise themselves up and position themselves against the religions and sects in order to conquer their millennia-old lies with the truth. Overpopulation will climb incessantly because of the irrationality of the people, and soon they will be as numerous on the earth as ants, and when they are bumped they will swarm round distraught and headless so that they lose all control over themselves. And many will be crushed when they helplessly sink into the masses. The religions and sects will, in the future, mix themselves as much as the people, who, through the mixing of peoples, make their own people become a multicultural nation. Round the world more and more, peace will be hypocritically spoken of, while mendacious and sectarian national powerful ones furtively stir up war and bring them to breaking out, and in every location families and neighbors who have become enemies prepare hell on earth for each other or people, and tribes who are enemies fight in bloody feud. Already for a long time the way of nature is lost for the human, and that will even continue to happen very much more, as the human believes in his high-handedness that he is the ruler over life and death. In times to come people will be less and less satisfied with their own bodies, and so they will allow all kinds of operations on themselves in order to be better proportioned and more beautiful, as they themselves imagine, whereby however their entire business damages their health and not seldom leads to mutilations or even death. There will no longer be cohesion in families and the family members will scatter themselves to the winds more and more. Through beauty cures and beauty aids people will decline to an early externally old appearance and they will earlier have wrinkles and white hair like old people because the utilized means will also damage the skin in the same way as do the ever more dangerous and increasingly hotter rays of the sun. In coming times many people will wander around in life without pause and be without leadership or direction because, due to inadequate love and warm-heartedness, as well as relationships from person to person, their consciousness, thoughts and feelings as well as psyche are stunted, whereby very many psychic illnesses and breakdowns result that not seldom will lead to suicide because no more help will be accessible to these people. In the course of time, very many people will renounce religions and sects, yet in spite of that, not sort out the truth regarding creation and also not its laws and directives because they want to steer their own lives like a mounted animal even though they lack the necessary knowledge and experience.
and already the earth human stands before the door that will enable him to determine the masculinity or femininity of the progeny in the body of the woman from which self-evidently results that, at last, already from the ground up, the gender of the descendant will be determined because the female egg will be fertilized in vitro with the corresponding sperm and then set into the womb, while all other undesired life will be killed off. The human will take himself more and more for creation, especially the powerful ones who snatch up everything from land and worldly possessions just exactly however it pleases them while the normal citizen is too poor and weak and will be treated like the lowliest livestock, whereby the housing for the common people will become like prisons in which the people spend time in fear of the powerful ones and the hate in the people unfolds ungovernably. The hate in humans will create a secret order of destruction that rages darkly in people and engenders an evil poison that is a line such that the authorities are to be fought against and, at the same time, to achieve money and wealth for oneself, and control over the earth, yet in the end the weak will listen to the rules of the powerful, whereby, however, it will be that laws will be passed in the dark whereby the poison of hate is aligned against the religions and sects and the thorn of hate spreads against them in order to clear appropriate space for the truthful truth. It will come to pass that the humans will become inactive going round with an empty look and not knowing where they should go because when the religions and sects disappear they will have no more cult places and no more cult preachers and no more sect leaders who can lead them in madness and confusion, which is why they will initially be without a goal or like a germinating seed that cannot yet strike roots so, as a result, the human wanders round without hope, destitute, humbled, and senselessly seeking everywhere for a foothold which they first, however, find when they utilize the creational truth and the creational laws and directive. But first, they will hate and fight themselves and hate their lives before they find the path to truth. When the third millennium comes many illnesses and plagues will rage and many waters will be dried out and will further dry out whereas other water will become brackish or poisonous or become a rarity whereby many people will have their existences and their lives threatened which leads to them having to painstakingly re-establish much of what they destroyed and they expend means to defend that which remains because some farther thinking people recognize that what they evilly wrenched from nature must be returned again. However the third millennium will also be the time when people will be frightened of the future because the world political military and environmental situation will be very precarious because the national powers of the United States of America and Israel in the same way threaten with war and destruction as worldwide will also the rebellious terrorists and in addition because humans have so terribly plundered raped and desecrated nature it will hit back with violent sea quakes and earthquakes and with monstrous rainstorms and primeval storm the earth would through the fault of mankind, through his overpopulation and the thereby connected monstrous demands, and through his hostile conduct towards nature and his destruction, as well as through the plundering of resources, raise itself against the people and quake round the globe with primeval force and tear people into death in their hundreds of thousands, whereby entire countries will be destroyed. The earth will avenge itself on mankind for his behavior because he will not have listened to the prophecies and predictions of the wise that warn about all the evil, as a result, from then on he must take evil threats from nature and violent destruction into account because, from then on and until far into the third millennium, villages will be buried under mudslides as well as snow and ice slides, while in other places abysses will open in the ground and, destroying everything, will tear everything into themselves never more to reach the surface. But still the human will be obstinate and not listen to the words, advice and warnings of the prophets and the wise, yet that will be avenged, as violent fires will destroy great forests, villages and towns and demand many human lives, because the conflagrations will have primeval force and drive people from their native homelands which will be robbed by unscrupulous plundering as it will also be in the villages and towns that will be abandoned because of sea quakes and earthquakes and because of storm. And through the fault of humans, chlorofluorocarbon sluice through the atmosphere, the earth will burn, 
and melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer will take hold and demand many deaths, and all that because, through human rationality, the majority of the ozone shield, which protects against the rays of the sun, will be destroyed, whereby the atmosphere will be like a curtain full of holes and the strong and burning light of the sun will burn the skin, and the eyes of many people will be permanently blinded. But the angst of humans will, however, be too late because too much will already be destroyed and annihilated by the turn of the millennium, resulting in ever more deserts overtaking the earth and the crushing deluge like water becoming ever more violent and deeper, ripping everything with it, flooding and destroying. Through the clear felling of rainforests, the oxygen level in the air will, already, before the third millennium, and until far along into it sink unnoticeably, which will have effects on the health of humans and animals, while at the same time the pollution of the environment and pollution of the air will have taken on such forms that people will be made sick from it, and the weak among them will perish. And in the third millennium the time comes when big parts of the continents disappear and the people will have to flee to the mountains, yet their sense of the catastrophes will only be of short duration because they will forget everything again quickly and therefore make an effort to do much rebuilding, because they are already creating phantasmagoria, through movies and television, as well as later through a worldwide netting of computers and electronics, through which they deceive themselves and see things that do not exist, and are only visually determined for the eye. Subsequently, their sense for reality disappears and they can no longer distinguish between reality and fiction whereby they lose themselves more and more in the labyrinth of life, while those who produce phantasms commercially as well as religious and sectarian phantasms, have an easy game with the people of faith, who they deceive in every possible manner and make them into humble beings, like cringing dogs. Towards the end of the second millennium researchers will clone animals and alter their genes any way they like and in the third millennium researchers will have the audacity to create in vitro humans who are intended to serve as human spare parts stores for organ. Even now it has already happened, and it will continue in the third millennium, that the earth human irrevocably exterminates many animal species and their subspecies in the air or water or on the land, because for him profit is more important than the conservation of the fauna. As it already is now, it will also be in the third millennium, and indeed extremely increased, that children no longer enjoy a genuine upbringing and their consciousnesses will no longer be educated in the context of evolution, as they will no longer be taught the truth by their parents, so they will be more and more ignorant regarding the truth and of the lessons of life, so they like their parents are hopeless, ignorant and remonstrating and are dedicated only to pleasure. Also in the third millennium the human will become more and more aggressive and deludes himself that he is the highest power, a result of which is that he will strike out everywhere in hate and wrath as well as in avarice and jealousy, just how and where it pleases him, and he will be strong in his evil thoughts and feelings and his degenerated behavior, as their quiet power makes him unpredictable and he will destroy, in a blind rage with howls of joy much that is painstakingly acquired and constructed. Well into the third millennium the human will remain faint-hearted and a dwarf in the development of his knowledge and wisdom and love, and will be driven by power behavior and domination over fellow humans, while his head will be stuffed full with unnecessary and false knowledge of mad religious, sectarian, philosophical, militaristic and combat orientated teaching, and of teachings of the thirst for blood, revenge and retribution. As since time immemorial the earth human still will not know for a long time into the third millennium why he lives and dies, what death means, and reincarnation and birth, because, as since time immemorial, he will wave his arms senselessly, futilely seeking the truth of creation and its law and directives, because, as since earliest times, he hangs on to religion and sects that bring him to whimpering like small children. In the third millennium, as has been since the earliest times, the believer of the various religions and sects will fight each other, because every believer wants to have the only correct God, it is all the same if he is named Shiva, God or Allah, so, 
In some places, the earth will become a battlefield when Islamists, Christians and Jews make war on one another, as in ancient times, and as it also happens today, as everybody insults the unbelief of those with other beliefs, and they all want to defend and spread the purity of their belief with their blood, even when great powers stand in opposition to them, who question the righteousness of their conduct. As is already the case now in 1958, in the third millennium innumerable people will also be locked out of the life of the society and, furthermore, many must eke out their lives as poor, as social, as beggars, as well as benefiting from handouts, because they are not accepted by society, rather thrown out or are unemployed, and are treated as if they were subhuman against which no ruler and government undertakes anything, rather they even exploit the poor and beggars with all kinds of taxes and charges, whereby they cannot afford a roof over their heads, and have no citizen's right anymore because they are outcasts of those who live in excess, and they will be half naked because they cannot afford clothing, and when they have something to sell it will only be their bodies, for their organs, or the path of whoredom. In the third millennium many people will listen to the old prophecies and predictions, to the proverbs of the prophets and the warnings of the wise, which have been handed down since ancient times, and they will thirst for retribution, and provoke the time in which the people stand up and call for the truth. However, before the people call for the truth it will be lost in an impenetrable labyrinth in which great angst and suspicion exist and the human is restlessly driven forward in order to find a way out of all the misery and the need. The truth of creation and its laws and directives, as well as the teachings of spirit and teachings of life, will be spread loud and strong and worldwide, yet the earth human will not hear them, because only few, who pursue reason and understanding, will utilize the great teachings, while all the others want more and more possessions and indulge in phantasms which they have arranged in their heads spurred on through bad and false prophets in religious and sectarian matters. And the time will be long before all this all comes to pass, a long time into the third millennium long, eight hundred years long, because, first then, the seeds of the teachings of the Spirit, the teachings of creation and its laws and directives, as well as the teachings of life, will slowly begin to germinate in the mass of humankind because they slowly open their eyes and ears, and honestly begin to seek the actual truth. The humans of the earth will listen and hear the prophet's teachings, then finally, they will open their eyes to see and learn to understand one another, and each would know that when one person is beaten or injured with words, that the other perceives the pain. It will be the time when, out of humanity, people become one, and understand that each is a smaller part of the neighbor and only unity gives strength, and neither skin color, nor belief, rather, only commonality and effective truth regarding creation and its laws and directives are of significance. And in distant times it will be that only one single and valuable language will be spoken worldwide, and the people will finally become real humans. And in distant times it will be that the earth humans have conquered out space and travel into the deep expanses of the universes, when they have constructed artificial stations outside the earth's atmosphere, in which many people will reside, work and lie. And it would be in that distant time that the earth human builds great cities in the seas and he will ordinarily move round in the depths of the water and nourish himself on all kinds of fruit from the sea. And in distant times it will be that humans talk reasonably and respectfully with one another and they will accept the old messages of the true prophet because their thoughts and feelings will be open for one another, and the consciousness and the psyche will be balanced. And in distant times it will be that the people will be many times older than they are in today's time in the year 1958, because their age will be hundreds of years. And in distant times it will be that the people recognize the power of their consciousness and learn the things that the true prophets knew and which were kept hidden as a secret until now, so they will open one door after another and gain monstrous cognitions, knowledge and wisdom about the truth of creation and its laws and directives, in order therewith to use and develop the powers of their consciousness.
and in distant times it will be that the people finally find their way out of their dark labyrinth and will find sublime life bubbling again like a clear spring. And in distant times it will be that the people relearn and adopt the teachings of the Spirit, the teachings of creation and the extent of its directive and laws, and the teachings of life, and will be knowing, and parents will again raise their children and instruct them in the teachings of truth, so that they understand life, dying, death, reincarnation and birth, as well as earth and the heaven. And in distant times it will be that the human will become greater in stature and more skillful, and the powers of his consciousness will encompass everything, and he also will possess everything that he wants to have. And in distant times it will be that the man alone will no longer be the ruling power, because from then on the woman will steer the fate of the world and humanity as true mother of the earth because she will wield her scepter over the man and break his imperiousness, tyranny, power lust and addiction to war, in order to end the times of ugly masculine barbarism, and nip in the bud man's devilish and murderous and high-handed acts, in order to finally allow peace on earth. And in distant times it will be that true love wakes in earth humans and this will be shared with all, whereby their existence transmutes in an easy tongue and long-cherished dreams and wishes become reality, while the evolution of the consciousness grasps possession of all people, whereby enters the true end of barbarism. And in distant times it will be that religious and sectarian belief will no longer be of validity, but rather only the pure truth of creation and the extent of its laws, whereby the happy days of humankind begin, and the person will find people again, and recognize and honor them as equal. And in distant times it will be, when the fourth millennium after Emmanuel's Christian time reckoning comes, that the earth and its humanity will have its creational order again, and there will be true love and unity, true freedom and harmony, as well as true worldwide peace. And in distant times it will be that the people will hurry through the universe from one end to the other in great and powerful spaceships, and they will have no more boundaries. And in distant times it will be that the forests, wetlands, meadows and fields bloom again, as also the deserts, which will be enlivened and planted, and in which many kinds of trees, bushes, grasses and flowers will reveal their glory, so the earth will be a wonderful garden in which the human will respect and honor all that lives, creeps and fly. And in distant times it will be that the human reconstructs and cleans everything that he destroyed or soiled because, from then on, he will honor and protect nature and life, as he will be knowing and wise and thereby think of the future of the planet and humanity, and bring respect and veneration to them all. And in distant times it will be that every human goes in step with every other, and one no longer harms the other and the people grant each other trust again to no longer be deceived, to have nothing more stolen, to no longer be robbed, and no longer be murdered. And in distant times it will be that the earth humans know everything about their own bodies and the bodies of all animals, as they will also will be knowledgeable about all the things of the world and life, as well as the creational natural laws, whereby sickness and plagues will be healed before they can come into existence, because it will be that every human will be just as much his own knowing and capable healer as he will be for his fellow humans. Collectively, the human will understand that he can only exist and live in the community, that one must help the other, that he must give and may not only take, and that he, as an individual, must see and understand himself to be as a custodian of the planet, humanity and human order. And in distant times it will be that the earth humans have learned to give and share in honesty and love and that stinginess is every bit as much means to achieve discontentment as is being closed off from the neighbor thereby no circumstances of loneliness can come. Still the human must learn everything first and utilize the powers of his consciousness and the teachings of the spirit as well as the teachings of creation and the extent of its laws as well as the teachings of life. Yet for this an iron fist is required for enforcement with which order drive out chaos and the human finds the correct path again. And in distant times it will be, when the fourth millennium after Emmanuel comes, that the human is the carrier of the creational truth, 
and that all living things are creations of the one and only creation of the universal consciousness and that creation alone is and knows the secret of all things and that it stands immeasurably much higher than all the gods and idols who without exception are of human origin and in distant times it will be that the humans remember the proverbs of the true prophets and remember what was once in all the past as they will also know what the future will be because through looking out ahead they will grasp the events and the course and the change of the world humanity and the universes as well as the secret of life and dying and will thereby have no more angst for their own death because they will know that life eternally continues in alternation with death life and to new life on earth as creation has determined through the unshakable extent of its laws which are unchangeable for all great times and are of eternal validity Edward Meyer Schloss Wittgen slash ZH slash Schwe's August 1950 on the 27th August 2010, Pertaha shared with Billy that the Pleiarans linguists had given him the following explanation for Azatung in the English language. Azatung equals very bad get out of the control of the good human nature. A fallout would also be possible instead of a get out. Azatung is bad getting out that is to say falling out of the control of rightly being human in the real and true sense. In Jesus Ausatan is explained in such a way among others these inclined and gotten out of control doings of the type of fundamental purpose fallen doings. From the 488th contact between Pataha and Billy, Monday 22nd February 2010. What you have just said corresponds exactly to what was explained to me by our linguist. In addition I was taught that the Latin term violent dates back to the old Larian phalant, which means violent. The term was further changed in the course of the time and was incorporated into other languages also in falsifying form and was interpreted in misguided form as gavalt. But gavalt has nothing to do with violent and violence, because the old Larian term in relation to dual means duilla and this is defined as using all available coursing means, powers based in the psyche, mind, and consciousness, capabilities and skills, in order to carry out and wield monstrous immense slash tremendous actions and deeds. This is the definition of dual, as it is explained by our linguists.